Because I pretty much sized up what Miami football's been since, obviously, a national t- title game in 02, and then they were still good in 03, 04, really about 05, somewhere in that yeah. range when it started to fall off, and started to look through not just the winning percentage, but a lot of different metrics related to winning. And to size up where this program's been for pushing 20 years now, And what in the world could possibly be wrong? Because there's obviously been a lot of changes among coaches. Now, the one common denominator, I will say, and at the time, this was this was a eye opening stat to a lot of people. But I went through all the final AP top 10 rankings because Miami hasn't finished in the final top 10 since like 04, 05. It was 03. That's the last time. 03. Okay. Yeah. So I went through all the AP rankings since then, all the top tens, and I counted all the individual teams. You know, there are teams like Houston and Georgia Tech that have finished in the top. And this this video is like three years old now, so it's probably been added to uh, a few more times. Missouri and time, Missouri finished top ten, I think, this year. Yeah, um, and they they have a couple times, but there was a total of like forty three schools that have finished in the top ten since Miami last finished in the top 10. And what made me think of this video was you mentioned seven and five. You said, just seems like we keep going seven and five, seven and five. And Miami's winning percentage since 05 is almost exactly seven and five. It is a seven and five record. Yeah. And um, the one common denominator, I will say before I turn it over to you as more of the expert, is that other than Mark Richt, kind of put him in a different category. And I think we've seen, unfortunately, because of his health and so forth, that you didn't get the best version of Mark Richt. And -hmm. obviously there were other things that happened uh, with his decision-making with his son and so forth. So that didn't turn out to be what it could have been. Uh, But he's the only successful coach. Everybody else wasn't successful before Miami hired them at the Power Five level. And they turned out to not be successful after. Uh, Mario would be the he now current current coach aside because obviously he achieved at Oregon, like you mentioned, Rose Bowl, yeah, Fiesta Bowl, and he won a couple Pac-12 championships. So all those other coaches pretty much showed to be a bad hire because they didn't accomplish anything outside of Miami either. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not only that, but for a long time, it seemed like the university didn't even like the football program. And you bring in someone like Donna Shalala, which is like saying Voldemort in the Miami fan base, um, where it basically just became you eat what you kill type thing. You know, uh, uh, the Cur- Curb Street really called it out a few years ago, and that's what really shifted things where it's you look at the AD, the president of the university, and the coach, and they all have this aligned vision where they want success for the football program. And you can watch the U documentary and players will say it, coaches will say it, local Miami media will say it, where it's people at the top of the university did not really care for the football program and want to be successful. The football program was successful in spite of the university, not because of it. And it really sort of just came down to the fact that there was no funding. I mean, we didn't even have an indoor facility until Mark Richt came around. And he was sort of looking around being like coming from the SEC and coming from Georgia and being like, yo, yo, what is this? Like, you you can't be serious. This isn't what you're giving me to try to like win and recruit. Right. I mean, Georgia spends millions of dollars every year and just recruiting. And we don't even have to really do that. You stop because we live in the hotbed of, talent where everyone comes down here and plucks our guys away so we don't need georgia money but still there was barely money in recruiting there's barely any of that and then you add in the fact that because of that lack of success people stop showing up to games and a lot of people point back to oh i miss the glory days of the 80s and the orange bowl well it's a tired point but it's a point that rings true miami's a city with a lot to do especially compared to back then and pro sports because back then in the eighties during the glory days, it was just the dolphins. It was the dolphins and the hurricanes. That's all this city had. 
Now you have the Heat, who've won multiple championships. You have the Panthers, who were just in the finals last year, and they're doing great this year. And it's another thing for people to put their money into. You have the Dolphins, who people are always going to be a fan of. And then the Marlins, to a lesser extent. But but it's still something else to attract away the dollar. And when the product that you're putting out there is mediocre football in a city like Miami, where outside of sports, there's also parties and clubs and the beach and all that stuff. People aren't really going to care nor go to it. On top of the fact that it's a small private university where at any given time there's only 11,000 students compared to Florida State where I've been up there to Tallahassee and there's like 30,000 kids on that campus and it's a town with not a lot to do outside of football and going to the bars. It's just, it was sort of the perfect storm for mediocrity because you could just get enough talent based off brand and name recognition to keep it afloat, you know, be hovering around 18, 19, maybe 11 one year in recruiting with a really good push for some top guys. But you were never going to get back to that top level until now recently the administration decided, okay, we're going to pump money into it. We're going to build this football facility. We're going to give Mario all the toys, all the NIL backing. Um, We're going to give him the contract. Because before Mario got here in his contract negotiations, the negotiations weren't just about, yeah, I want my $10 million or $8 million a year. It was about, okay, I need this in order to succeed. I need this in order to succeed. I need this budget allocated for staff. I need this budget allocated for recruiting. And that's what's finally given into now that we're seeing that success with improving the roster. Hopefully it translates on the field, but that's where sort of this team has been stuck with the fact that the administration wasn't behind it. It started at the very top where it was, it was never going to succeed as fans. You always hope you always pray and, you know, we had that nice 2017 season. But, again, it came in spite of the school because no one was really there trying to back the football program. 